Hello everyone, welcome back to Potterbase. Today I'm continuing my top chapter series with the top 5 chapters from the Half-Blood Prince. As always, please leave your own thoughts in the comments, I'd be really interested to know your top 5 chapters from this book. Okay, so at number 5 I have Spinner's End. This is the second chapter of the Half-Blood Prince and is essentially a second prologue straight after the first one which is the Other Minister, which is also a great chapter by the way. In this chapter, Narcissa and Bellatrix visit Snape, who then makes an unbreakable vow with Narcissa and promises to help Malfoy accomplish the task Voldemort has asked him to perform. But the unbreakable vow only really comes up at the end. The main reason I love this chapter is because it's one of the few occasions where we get to see Snape acting as a double agent. The other main example is the opening chapter of The Deathly Hallows. The most enjoyable parts of the chapter are Snape's responses to Bellatrix's questions. In essence, she doesn't trust Snape and she asks several questions about his actions over the last few years. Of course, Snape's answers are more than satisfactory and the chapter essentially reveals why Voldemort has never suspected him. On to number 4, Lord Voldemort's Request. This is one of the many pensive chapters in the Half-Blood Prince and this chapter actually involves two memories, both of which follow Voldemort when he was a young man post Hogwarts. The first revolves around Tom Riddle's visit to Hepzibah Smith and she shows Riddle Hufflepuff's cup which then later becomes a Horcrux. But it's the second memory that makes this chapter so good. It involves a young Tom Riddle going to visit Dumbledore at Hogwarts and asking for a job. It's fascinating to see these two titans of good and evil face off against each other but without using magic, it's just a conversation between the two of them. We get to see the early stages of their various disagreements on magic and what they believe to be right and wrong. It's a really interesting moment in the series and it would be great to see it in a TV adaptation one day. At number 3 I have Horcruxes. This is the chapter immediately after Harry gets the memory from Slughorn. He then goes straight to Dumbledore's office and the two of them experience the memory in its totality. In addition to the dialogue from Slughorn, Dumbledore also tells Harry about Horcruxes once the memory is finished. This chapter explains Voldemort's declining humanity over the course of his life, why he didn't die when he attacked Harry as a baby and how it would be possible to eventually kill him. In other words, there are a lot of vital details in this chapter and I imagine it was not easy to write at all. It's the most important chapter in terms of setting up the final novel and J.K. Rowling executes it remarkably well. You finish it feeling both enlightened and excited and when I read it for the first time I remember being glued to the page. Now onto the runner up, the lightning struck tower. This is definitely the most shocking, impactful chapter in the Half-Blood Prince, possibly the entire series actually. It's the big one, the one where Dumbledore is killed by Snape. When reading for the first time, my dad actually read this chapter twice in a row because he couldn't believe what had happened. Now of course, Dumbledore's death is the standout moment, it really does wallop you over the head the first time you read it. But I also want to draw your attention to the other key aspect of this chapter, which is Draco's conversation with Dumbledore. Please do correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's the only time in the series where the two of them exchange dialogue. Not only that, but the reader learns about what Draco has been doing for the past year and why, including the fact he was behind the attacks on Katie Bell and Ron Weasley, and how Madame Rosmerta is also under the Imperius curse. Which takes us to number one, the secret riddle. This is yet another pensive chapter and it's the first one involving Tom Riddle. It follows a younger Dumbledore as he goes to visit an 11 year old Voldemort. Up until this point Voldemort has been a rather bland villain but this chapter changes this dramatically. By showing the early stages of his life it gives Voldemort much more depth and although he's nowhere near as evil as he will eventually become, you do see the origins of his malice, specifically in the way he values his independence and refuses Dumbledore's offer to take him to Diagon Alley, and how even as a child he was using magic to bully and intimidate other people, in this case children at the orphanage. What's more, he would often steal from said children and this magpie-like tendency was a foreshadowing of the horcruxes he would go on to create in later life. And just like Voldemort's request, any exchange between Voldemort and Dumbledore is always going to be interesting regardless of how long they've known each other. So there we have it, those are my top 5 chapters from the Half-Blood Prince. I hope you enjoyed the video, let me know your top 5 in the comments below. Other than that, it's goodbye from me until next time.